The Japanese islands sit on the edge of the Pacific, just off the Asian mainland, and, and stretch in an arc for 1500 miles from close to Taiwan in the South China Sea, up until they almost touch the frozen coast of Siberia. And in ancient times, the emperors of Japan only controlled the south and west of these islands. The northern islands were the domain of the Ezo people, ancestors of the modern Ainu, who hunted bears and fished for salmon in the rivers of Tohoku and Hokkaido. And between the Ezo people and the domain of the Japanese emperor were the badlands of the Emishi renegades, bandits, outlaws, who refused to acknowledge imperial authority. And it was to here, a thousand years ago, that a Japanese emperor sent a prince, a member of a junior branch of the imperial family, to marshal what was then the outer borderlands. And upon arriving, the prince came here to this shrine to Amaterasu, the sun goddess, from whom he and his imperial kin claimed descent pray for good fortune. And as he asked the sun goddess for blessings for him, his sons and his son's sons, perhaps the sun goddess was listening. Because this man's name was Yoriyoshi Minamoto and this place is Kamakura. surrounded on three sides by steep hills and cliffs and on the fourth side by the Pacific Ocean that the Minamoto family decided to make their base and it was from here that they would go on as shoguns to conquer Japan.
This is modern Kamakura. 35 miles southwest along the coast from central Tokyo. Just an hour by train and facing the ocean. A magnet for day trippers and commuters alike who yearn for a break from the concrete high rises and the constant bustle of the world's largest city. Not that Kamakura isn't bustling. It's a wonderful location, oceanside and mountainside. Sophisticated shops and cafes and beach culture make it, along with its neighbouring towns on the Shonan coast, an extremely desirable destination and residential location. A Japanese Riviera. Nearby Enoshima is the Olympic yachting venue. But Enoshima and Kamakura are not just modern boat holes for weary urbanites yearning sun, sand, surf and greenery. Here is one of Japan's cultural and historical centres, which was the nation's most powerful and important city in the Middle Ages. While far to the west, the emperor's capitals of Nara and Kyoto deservedly get the plaudits as the ancient cultural capitals, it was here, Kamakura, that the shape and nature of medieval Japan was forged. Its culture, its society, its religion, its government and its warfare. Bringing forth so much of what we now think of as so typically Japanese. The tea ceremony, Zen Buddhism and its beautiful gardens, many other types of Buddhism and of course the samurai and the shoguns. You might wonder, given that Japan has had emperors for all of its recorded history, and probably for a lot longer than that, why, until modern times, they also had shoguns, these all-powerful warrior rulers? Well, at first, they weren't rulers. They weren't even politicians, they were just warriors, appointed by emperors to guard and expand the frontiers of the Japanese state, usually in the north and east. And this shrine, Tatsumi Jinja, was built to commemorate when one of those early shoguns, the revered Saka no Ue no Tamuramaro, passed through here on his way to a successful military campaign against the northern tribes in 801. So how did men who later followed Tamuramaro as shogun become not just the chief military figure in the land but also the chief political figure too? To find the answer, we need to go to the imperial court, which by the start of the 9th century had moved from Nara to Kyoto, where it would remain for the next thousand years. At this magnificent new court, where emperors increasingly became little more than ceremonial figureheads, actual political authority passed to trusted and ambitious advisers and counsellors from other families attached to the imperial court. Political power mainly rested in the hands of the Fujiwara family and the emperor's military enforcers often belonged to another family with the surname of Minamoto. In the 9th and 10th centuries this Minamoto family was one of a number of families in the imperial capital that claimed relations, kinship with the imperial family, whether it be fourth cousin, six times removed, ninth generation grandchildren. And they were told that the imperial family was getting too big and they would have to stand on their own two feet. So some of these families stuck around got jobs as court counsellors or advisors but others members of the Minamoto, Taira, Fujiwara families and others decided to strike out on their own and create their own domains on the northern and eastern borders. In 
choosing to limit the size of the imperial family though, the emperors were also limiting its power and influence. It would be the councillors and the advisors belonging to the Fujiwara and then the Taira families who would gain most influence at the imperial court. But ultimately, it would be the Minamoto family from their stronghold in Kamakura who would wrest power away not only from the Fujiwara and Taira families, but also from the imperial court and away from the imperial capital of Kyoto. So, after coming to Kamakura, and praying at the Shrine of the Sun Goddess for good fortune in his new position as governor of this domain, Yoriyoshi also came here and built this shrine, Moto Hachiman, to the God of Warriors, asking for success on the battlefield. And again, perhaps that God was listening because Yoriyoshi, fighting against the rebel tribes and clans of the North, was immensely successful. And additionally, the son he prayed for, Yoshie, was a formidable warrior, so formidable that he earned the nickname Hachimantaro, son of the warrior god. Yoriyoshi's clan, the Minamoto, had long claimed descent from this warrior god Hachiman, the deification of the ancient emperor Ojin. It was a logical choice. The Minamoto's stock in trade was warfare. And upon reaching Kamakura, Yoriyoshi spent much of the next nine years in the northern badlands, bringing the Ezo tribes and the renegade Abe clan to heel. The Minamoto did have their ups and downs in this war though, but the battlegrounds were crucial in forming their toughness and resolve and reputation. For Yoriyoshi's son, Yoshie in particular, it forged a formidable, feared and revered warrior. When the Kiyawara clan earlier allies turned on the Minamoto, it was Yoshie who quickly crushed them, earning the reputation and the nickname Hachimantaro, son of the warrior god, and placing the Minamoto as the supreme warrior clan in the north and east, paving the way for not only Minamoto leaders to become legendary, but also their men too. Well, as I'm not expecting to find myself on the field of battle anytime soon, I've asked for success for the Yokohama Bay Stars baseball team and Manchester United. From the time the Minamoto made Kamakura their base, warriors' legends and folk tales tell of how they spent the next two centuries consolidating their power politically and especially militarily. A well-loved children's folk tale Kintaro tells of how a Minamoto general, Yorimitsu, traveling in the mountains and forests of Ashigara to the west of Kamakura, comes across a small boy with superhuman strength who can even wrestle bears. Understandably impressed, Yorimitsu invites Kintaro to become his samurai retainer, and Kintaro gladly agrees and goes on to be the legendary warrior Sakata no Kintoki. And this is Goryo Jinja, a shrine to the power and bravery of a 16 year old samurai, the mighty boy warrior, Kamakura Kagimasa. The legend of Kamakura Kagimasa says that as a 16 year old fighting in the north for his lord, Minamoto Yoshie, he received an arrow wound to the eye, but continued fighting, fell in his opponent and helping his side win the battle before going back to the Minamoto camp and collapsing in agony. Then, a comrade, 
attempted to remove the arrow by standing on his face and he told his comrade that he would be so insulted if that happened that it would kill him. So later, they found a more polite way of removing the arrow and built the shrine to the youth's heroic bravery. If you ever come across a potted history of camera cover, you're quite likely to be fed the line that before the noble warrior Minamoto family arrived here, this place was little more than a fishing village. But actually, two or three centuries before the Minamoto came, Kamakura was already a centre of some religious significance. This shrine not only predates Kamakura's days as Japan's political and military capital, it goes back all the way to the very start of the unified Japanese political, cultural and religious awakening. At the very moment the emperors were building Nara, Japan's first proper capital city, the idea was hit upon to include there a magnificent monumental place of worship that would bind the entire nation together in endeavouring to construct it. And in this huge awe-inspiring temple would be an enormous Buddha, cast in bronze, coated in gold, that citizens the length and breadth of the land would be asked to assist in the construction of, practically and financially. And the man charged with the task of rousing the new, still disparate nation in such a daringly splendid venture, aimed at cementing the people and government, was Gyoki, the most energetic and beloved religious figure of his day tirelessly travelling the land, founding temples and shrines that both cemented local communities and served as conduits through which local manpower and finance could be funnelled in the cause of building this great capital city's temple. Gyoki came here, to Kamakura, building both this shrine, the city's first, along with its first temple, Sugimoto Dera. And in the spirit of national unity, Gyoki dedicated this shrine to the nation's defining deity, the sun goddess, Amaterasu. Sugimoto Dera, the temple under the cedar trees, is Kamakura's oldest temple. It was founded by the priest Gyoki in the year 734. Sugimoto Dera, Kamakura's first temple, was founded in 734 AD. And two years later, not a hundred yards from here, another temple, Hasedera, was founded under very mystical circumstances. The story of the founding of this temple, Hasedera, Kamakura's second oldest temple also involves Gyoki Bosatsu, Japanese Buddhism's most fervent and evangelical individual of the 8th century. And the story begins in Nara, near, near the ancient imperial court, 
and culminates in the Pacific Ocean just near here on a summer evening in 736 AD. Hasidera, truly a temple shrouded in the mists of time. Many centuries ago, in the reign of the Empress Gensho, there lived a holy priest in the province of Yamato, known as Tokudo Shonin. Tokudo Shonin was passing through a valley in Yamato, and there he beheld upon the ground the fallen trunk of a mighty camphor tree, over 100 feet in length. The priest fell upon his knees, reciting the scriptures and praying that the sacred wood might be consecrated and immortalized in the form of the goddess of mercy. Moreover, the holy priest Gyoki Bosatsu was requested to preside at the consecration ceremony. The temple for the reception was duly constructed at Hase, Yamato, and the dedication was celebrated amidst great rejoicings. When the ceremonies were ended, Yoki Bosatsu solemnly addressed the newly consecrated figures, decreeing that the statue framed from the base of the tree should dwell within its shrine at Hase for all eternity. But the twin form that had been carved from the upper half of the sacred camphor tree, he commanded to be reverently committed to the ocean. For 16 long years, nothing was heard of the fate of the statue. However, one summer night, June 18, 736, the fisher folk of Kamakura received the tidings that in the Bay of Sagami a strange object was floating in the deep from which gleams of light were radiated. The goddess had arrived! The sacred image was conveyed to the shore and found a temporary shelter within a shed of straw and rushes. This intelligence soon reached the imperial ear. Again a messenger was dispatched with instructions that a suitable temple should be constructed for the reception of the mighty image. From that remote age, this famous statue of mystic origin has been worshipped and hallowed by the devotion of myriads of the faithful who have derived manifold benefits and preservation from malign influences from the compassion and charity of this merciful goddess. The incarnation of loving kindness, who is said to have renounced the joys of paradise in order to guide the feet of countless weary pilgrims to the heaven of eternal peace in Nirvana. That account of the founding of Hasidera was written by Sugawara no Michizane, not only a leading politician of the late 9th century, but also the most revered scholar and poet of his day. Sadly, he died in exile after falling foul of imperial court politics, but that wasn't the end of the story. A sudden, inexplicable series of lightning strikes, plagues and earthquakes hit the imperial court. And astrological advisers and supernatural experts told the emperor that this was because of Michizane's aggrieved soul. So it was decided that Michizane should be posthumously pardoned and, and reinstated to his former posts and enshrined as a god. This shrine to Michizane here, Kamakura's oldest wooden building, was built in 1104 after an image of Michizane fell from the sky during a violent thunderstorm.
Michizane was posthumously given the title Tenjin, God of Learning, and school kids and students still come to his shrines today to pray for good luck. Now these imperial court conspiracies to which people like Michizane fell prey was something that the Minamoto for a long time were largely safe from here in faraway Kamakura. But eventually they too would become entangled in toxic imperial court politics. And for the Minamoto it would almost bring about their utter destruction. I'm here tonight to see the fireflies, hopefully. Fireflies love clear running water, like in this mountain stream. Wonderful, really nice. As the years passed, Japan's two most famous species of firefly became known as Genji and Heike, named after the two clans that swore allegiance to Japan's two most famous warrior families of the 12th century, the Minamoto or Genji clan, and the clan that would go on to become their bitter enemies the Taira or Heike clan and the story of the violent battles between these two clans for supremacy of Japan is contained in the nation's greatest war epic the tale of the Heike which begins with these words Guillaume Bell tolls, sounding the knell that all things must pass. Like the colours of the summer camellia, prosperity is ever followed by decline. The proud do not endure, they are like a dream on a spring night. Even the mighty meet with destruction until they are as dust before the wind. Another offshoot of the Imperial family, which, like the Minamoto, had gone off to seek their fortune in the outer provinces, were the Taira clan. And for a long time, relations between the Taira, the Minamoto, the Fujiwara, and other noble families were harmonious. They worked together, they cooperated, they fought together, and they intermarried. But as time wore on, certain members of the Tyra clan developed a propensity for going rogue. Not only defying imperial authority, but often proclaiming themselves as emperor. And it was often up to the Minamoto as imperial enforcers to bring them back into line. In the middle of the 12th century, after 200 years of failed coup attempts, the Tyra 
hit upon a new idea. Not to overthrow the imperial court, but to infiltrate and manipulate it. So that by 1156, the Tyra were firmly in control in Kyoto. And so in 1156, with the Taira clan firmly in control in Kyoto, the Minamoto finally found themselves embroiled in imperial court intrigues when a dispute arose over imperial succession. Maybe subsequent events wouldn't have turned out so tragically for the Minamoto had they all chosen the same candidate. But the clan leader, Tamayoshi, and his son, Yoshitomo backed rival candidates for the throne. After the short war that ensued, it was Yoshitomo Minamoto who prevailed. So he and the Taira placed their preferred candidate, the man who would become Emperor Go Shirakawa, on the throne. But matters didn't end there, as the vengeful Taira, perhaps seeing this as a means of weakening and perhaps even destroying the Minamoto, ordered Yoshitomo to execute his own father. Ultimately, Yoshitomo wasn't forced to commit patricide as one of his faithful retainers committed the act himself, executing Tamayoshi before performing one of the first instances of harakiri in Japanese history. But this had created bad feeling between the Taira and the new Minamoto clan leader Yoshitomo and before long he was in open revolt. With imperial authority behind them, the Taira were unstoppable though and soon Yoshitomo found himself on the run. And by the end of 1159 he was dead and his clan were leaderless and the Taira were pursuing them with the aim of bringing about the clan's utter extinction. The only ones who survived were clan members who managed to flee to their eastern strongholds, or clan members who were deemed too old or too young by the Taira to be of any threat. Two members of the Minamoto clan who were spared execution Yoshitomo's youngest son, Yoshitsune, a mere babe in arms who was packed off to a monastery in the mountains outside Kyoto, and Yoshitomo's 15-year-old son, Yoritomo, primarily because the Taira clan leader's mother-in-law proclaimed Yoritomo reminded her of her own deceased son. And so, despite Taira clan member warnings that this was like letting a tiger loose in the wild, Yoritomo was packed off to the east to live under the careful watch of a distant Taira relative, the Lord of the Hojo. It seems strange to me that the victorious Taira family, in letting Yoritomo, the son of their mortal enemy, live, placed him in the care of the Hojo family. Technically, the Hojo were a branch of the Taira family, but they had long connections to the Minamoto too. It was an ancestor of the Hojo who invited Yoriyoshi, the first Minamoto Lord of Kamakura to make his base here and Yoriyoshi took a woman of the Hojo family for his wife as his great 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 grandson Yoritomo would later do.
Pato Sabari, dove shaped cookies, along with green tea ice cream, one of Kamakura's delicacies. How many do you want? I'm there now. Four boxes. Okay, ma'am. The dove is a symbol not only of Kamakura but also of the Minamoto family. As a youth, Yoritomo was put in the care and under the watch of the Lord of the Hojo. And when the Hojo Lord's daughter, Masako, saw a dove in her dream, she took it as meaning Yoritomo would become her husband. One rainy night, Yoritomo and Masako eloped and fled to the mountains. Now, although the Taira were in control of Japan, and although they had practically destroyed their hated rivals, the Minamoto, and despite the fact that their preferred candidate, Go Shirakawa, was on the throne, all was not well in the imperial capital. After their victory over Yoshitomo, it soon became apparent to all that the Taira were nothing more than tyrants, hell-bent, on ruling Japan to serve their own needs. Go Shirakawa realized he was nothing more than a puppet and his protests only resulted in him being overthrown and a new emperor being installed, the grandson of the Taira leader Kiyomori. In desperation, Go Shirakawa's son, Prince Mochihito, sent out a plea that if any of the Minamoto had survived, rise up and defeat these hated Tyra. It was at this moment that Yoritomo chose to openly rebel, raising troops with the intention of avenging his father, overthrowing the Tyra and taking control of Japan. Yoritomo's uprising didn't start well though. He headed west to engage with the Tyra, but had only managed to gather forces of about 300 men, with himself and Masako's brother, Munetoki, at the helm when they came up against the Tyra at Ishibashiyama, in the mountains to the west of Kamakura. Taira forces outnumbered Yoritomo and his men 10 to 1. The powerful Miura clan, a samurai clan from Kamakura, tried to send reinforcements west to aid Yoritomo, but they were stranded as heavy rain over the coastal plains to the west of Kamakura flooded the rivers. Munetoki, Yoritomo's brother-in-law, and many of the Minamoto warriors were killed and Yoritomo had to flee for his life.
when Yoritomo Minamoto lost his first battle to the Taira, he managed to escape. Yoritomo fled to the forest and was pursued by the Tyra. Yoritomo hid in a tree and luckily the rustling that drew the attention of his Tyra pursuers was put down to the white doves they saw nestling in Yoritomo's tree. So despite military defeat, this event was deemed auspicious by Yoritomo. And Yoritomo managed to escape his pursuers by jumping on a boat and escaping across the bay from Kamakura here to the distant province of Awa. And fortunately for him, the eastern clans, even the eastern Taira led by Hirotsune, rallied behind Yoritomo. Such was the disdain for the western Taira. And after escaping to Awa, these hordes of new followers who flocked to Yoritomo urged him to reclaim Kamakura as his capital. Entering the city in 1180, and in the spirit of his ancestors, he built a new shrine, this time a grand new shrine, Surago Kahachi Mangu. And also in the spirit of his ancestors, Yoritomo prayed that his wife would deliver him a son and heir. Every year on the second Sunday of June, the local people of Zaimokuza here in the southeast coastal district of Kamakura gather at Gosho Jinja Shrine for the annual festival. Eight centuries after Turago Kachimangu Shrine was built, the chants of these local people as they carry the shrines is identical to the chant of their forefathers as they carried the wood from Zaimokuza Beach and up Wakamiya Ojidori Avenue to build this new grand shrine for their new lord, Yoritomo. Yoritomo had gathered support and forces, the Taira in Kyoto sent a huge army eastward to smash this Genji upstart once and for all. Hearing this, Yoritomo gathered his own army and marched westwards. And the two forces met and glared at each other across the banks of the Fujikawa River. But wily old Yoritomo, as night fell, decided to launch a surprise attack. But his men were samurai, not ninja. And as they tried to wade across the waters of the river as quietly as they could, they inadvertently managed to disturb a flock of birds. Luckily for them, 
The sound of these birds sounded like the beating of horses' hooves. And the Tyra, terrified, fled back to Kyoto without so much as an arrow being fired. Now, after this piece of good fortune at the Fujikawa River, Yoritomo wanted to chase his Tyra enemies back to Kyoto. But his fellow leaders of the eastern clans said no. We're not strong enough yet. We don't know how strong the Tyra are and we don't want to leave our strongholds undefended. So Yoritomo was forced to acquiesce and wait for a better opportunity to take the battle west to the Tyra. But that opportunity came sooner than he thought and I'll read to you what happened next. While the troops were encamped upon the banks of the Kisogawa, a dramatic incident occurred. A youthful samurai of dignified and noble mien suddenly appeared in the camp and requested an interview with Yoritomo. The new arrival proved to be the famous Yoshitsune, ninth son of Yoshitomo, and under these circumstances Yoritomo beheld for the first time the face of his youngest brother. So, where had Yoshitsune been for the previous 20 years? Well, much of his childhood is now shrouded in myth and legend, but what is agreed as historical fact is that his poor mother was forced to give him up in infancy by the tyrannical Taira leader, Kiyomori. Kiyomori did allow Yoshitsune to live, but it was on the understanding that his mother returned Kiyomori's favour with favours of her own. Yoshitsune, as a baby, was packed off to a mountain temple outside Kyoto and the monks who were charged with taking care of him were strictly ordered not to let him learn martial skills and not to let him learn of his heritage as the son of the leader of the Minamoto. These carefully laid plans of the Taira, though, didn't come to fruition because, according to legend, the young Yoshitsune befriended the king of the Tengu, the mountain goblins of Kurama, and they told him that he was Yoshitomo's son, and they also schooled him in the ways of the warrior. Didn't we, fellas? Newly emboldened, Yoshitsune decided to go on an adventure to Kyoto, the imperial capital. But when he arrived, he found his way blocked by a warrior monk, a fierce brigand known as Benkei. Benkei was unbeaten in combat, and he challenged young Yoshitsune to a duel. But Yoshitsune, now with the training of the Tengu behind him, gladly accepted and gave Benkei a beating he didn't expect. But instead of sulking, Benkei, hugely impressed, by this young fighter, swore to follow him even until death, and their friendship became one of the greatest stories in Japanese folklore. Further emboldened by defeating Benkei and acquiring his friendship, Yoshitsune decided to escape from the Taira and the imperial capital up to the domain of Hidehira, the lord of the northern Fujiwara. The noble lord Hidehira, like Benkei, took a shine to Yoshitsune and decided to befriend, protect and train him in the ways of the warrior. And so it was, although still youthful, when he arrived at the camp of his older brother Yoritomo in 1180, Yoshitsune was ready to take the battle west. And so it was agreed that Yoritomo would remain 
in the eastern stronghold of Kamakura, directing the campaign, while his dashing younger brother, Yoshitsune, would lead the army west. And so, the two Minamoto brothers, newly united, went to the shrine of their ancestor, the warrior god Hachiman, to pray for victory and resolved to take the war west to Kyoto and the strongholds of the Taira. And you can find out what happened in that war in the next episode of Kamakura Rise and Fall of the Shoguns. Thank you for watching.